All of you must have felt a vibration going through me to you, hmm? right? I'm nothing but just a channel of that divine force. And that divine force, being a channel, flows through me. Why he has chosen me, I don't Good question. so incomplete in the vastness of spirituality. Yet it is our nature to talk. How are, are we to view our talking? Very good. The best way the best way to review our talking is by not talking. Now, what does that mean? It means that talk is nothing else but the verbalization of thought. And when thoughts become steady, silent, and finds an equilibrium, then the real talk begins, the real review begins between you and him. So words has its value naturally, especially more so for a spiritual master, because he has to give people some understanding of themselves. So it has its purpose. But the real answer comes always when you become still. Hmm? I've given you all the tools to become still. I've given you all the spiritual energies to become still. Keep alive those spiritual energies by being regular in, a, in your Guru Shakti practices. Hmm? So therefore, this is what is meant in the scriptures. Be still and know that I am God. Uh -huh. Who are you really knowing? Hmm? You knowing by being still, you are only knowing stillness, and that stillness is divinity itself. So be still and know that I'm God. And then after that stillness, you can reflect upon it at your leisure. Was there any experience? Or was there no experience? Now, the greatest experience is to have no experience. Because stillness itself is still. Hmm? There has to be an outside party to witness the stillness. 
and the outside party that witnesses the stillness has to be active in witnessing. So, that witness is going to disturb your stillness. So, stillness finds itself within itself, hmm? bringing the peace to your hearts, to your minds. And believe you me, my beloveds, when you experience that peace, you want nothing else in the world. You want nothing. Hmm? For what else is there greater than that peace? So in the stillness you find peace. And in reflection, after the stillness, you find joy. So peace comes first, and joy and bliss comes afterwards, in a retrospection. Yes. So, we do not review that peace or that spirituality. No. Not in the moment of its own experience. To repeat again, this must be done in a retrospection. Hmm? You think after and you sit down and say, Oh, how joyful I've been, how blissful now. The next stage after that is this, that in a retrospection, when you recollect that joy and that bliss, it will tend to linger on in you. For one moment of spirituality, all that bliss, will last you for 24 hours of the day. And that is why you always find me blissful. Even if tears come from my eyes, the tears never of sorrow, but of joy. For I see joy in everything, in everything all the time. But sometimes there's sorrow. When I see the sorrow in others, yet inside me I know that that sorrow that my beloveds have uh, is just but surface, and I can see beyond the surface. The true spiritual master can transform with a touch or with a glance. Hmm? Looking in a person's eyes. So many mechanisms are involved there in that moment. Do you say? Don't you feel far more peaceful now than when you woke up this morning? Huh? Yes, 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 yes. That is the touch of the Master, the true Master. Hmm? And the true Master says he's a true Master for the sake of using words to verbalize things. But there is only one true master, that fellow upstairs there, hmm? who is not only upstairs, but also downstairs, within you. 
So we have to use words to explain certain things. But behind those words, uh, there's a whole depth of meaning for who is the true master. Only he. And that true master can flow through a little bodily form. It flows through everything. Hmm? But it flows more powerfully through a self-realized person or an avatar. When we meet again in November, I'll go into far deeper details of how you can recognize an avatar or the true spiritual master. No, we from past office 12, because when I flow, I just keep on flowing, flowing, flowing. What are these, my darling? I would say these gifts are not needed, but they are very welcome because of my needs. Mm -hmm. Having a family to support, having shelter to pay for mortgages, having to send children to universities and mm, things like that. Mm. Um, let's just allow for two, damn it, five minutes. Um, this fellow asked his friend about someone. Wasn't he shocked? when his mother-in-law died. So he replies to this fellow that, yes, he was electrocuted. <laughs> <laughs> this chap went to the film producer. You know, a lot of them used to come to me when I was in the film business, film world, as an actor, as a director, producer of the works. So, um, this fellow goes to this film producer and uh, the producer asks, can you act? So he replies, I can act so well. I did a play and I died in the play so convincingly hmm, that one man in the audience fainted and he was my insurance agent. <laughs> Hmm. This one fellow appeared in front of a judge for the fifth time. So the judge scolded him. I said, look, you are here for the fifth time in two months. So this guy replies, the accused replies, I like to come here, I like to do business, I like to do business and give business to the person I like. <laughs> you know, this young man asked his father a $64,000 question. He asked his father a $64 question hmm? and the question was this. Will you lend me $64,000? <laughs> oh, there's so many more here. <laughs> Save them. You know, the mother was Irish and very proud of it. The father was Scotch 
and he was very fond of it. <laughs> this chief captured a missionary hmm? and this African chief spoke perfect English, even better English than what I could speak. Hmm. So this chief, the cannibal chief, spoke perfect English. So the missionary says, you speak such perfect English. I mean, that was before he was put into the boiling pot. So the chief, cannibal chief replies, I went to Harvard. That's near Boston, isn't it? Harvard University. I went to Harvard. Hmm? Well, that is why I speak perfect English. He says, but then if you've been to Harvard, do, why do you still eat people? So the cannibal chief replies, now I use a knife and fork. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he learned in Harvard. Eh? <laughs> well, it's been such a joy being with you all. The joy really has been mine, and all of you have been so, so kind, uh, so loving. Hmm? And that is what the world must have more and more and more love. Thank you very much, and see you in November.